Well, Superman has his Fortress of Solitude, and Bruce Wayne has the Batcave, and me, the Menzoid, I've got the Menzoid Man Cave, where we like to sit back, relax, chill out, and talk about the issues of the day. And my guest, once again, on the Man Cave is Kathy Shadle, who is the mistress, I guess? Yep, yeah, that's okay. right. Okay. <laughs> five Feet of Fury, a wonderful blog. Thank you. Thank you for coming into the Man Cave Thanks. yet again, Kathy. And, you know, the whole purpose of uh, Kathy coming here is to talk about pop culture and how pop culture uh, it reflects or interacts with the news of the day. And the uh, subject du jour today is the summer blockbuster, The Dark Knight Rises. And i got to tell you, Kathy, when I heard about uh, the direction of this film before I saw it, uh, I had my little neck hairs on my uh, back go up. Uh, the idea that there was going to be an Occupy theme, and they said, my goodness, this is not going to be something where we see Batman becoming the, the hero of the, the forces behind Occupy, because you know how left-wing and left-leading Hollywood can be. And thankfully, it's not. No, that's true. Well, congratulations to you because you managed to make me leave the house, uh, let alone <laughs> go to a movie for the first time in a long time. I tend to avoid uh, new releases because they tend to be just remakes and rip-offs and trying to squeeze the last few bucks out of some old franchise. But I'm glad I went at your mm. suggestion. It was very interesting. Well, fantastic. And you know what? Let's just take a quick look at a, a few of the clips from uh, The Dark Knight Rises. The mayor's going to dump him in the spring. Really? Mm-hmm. But he's a hero, a war hero. This is peacetime. You think this can last? There's a storm coming, Mr. Wayne. You and your friends better batten down the hatches. Because when it hits, you're all going to wonder how you ever thought you could live so large and leave so little for the rest of us. What, what I found especially interesting about this movie is that on one hand you have the, the villain, Bane, who uh, has had misery in his life and has basically taken the root of the occupiers that he wants society to pay uh, dearly for the misery that he has suffered, whereas other characters who have also had misery in their lives, they overcome that misery by going down a more positive route, you know, understanding that destruction and death is not an anecdote for what ails them. Yeah, that was interesting to me too because Bane is kind of a typical uh, villain in the sense that, uh, especially in modern times, we tend to do one little flashback where we show that his parents were killed or something and we have a little bit of sympathy for him. You see him, a little tear going down his face near the end of the movie. But what's interesting to me is that the real life occupiers didn't exactly grow up in uh, the the pit of Cal the you know the pit of Calcutta there where he grew up in the in the it's just the opposite. Yeah. Most of the Occupy people come from really privileged backgrounds, and they're complaining uh, about poverty when they've never experienced it. So um, I, I kind of wish that they had looked at that aspect of it. Maybe if it originally Bane had been sort of uh, like Bruce Wayne, a privileged person who decided to take on uh, helping the poor. Mm. Uh, at, you know, Bane at least has an excuse. The modern day Occupy people really don't have even his excuse for uh, trying to foment revolution. It's a fantastic big screen film. Mm. Second topic du jour. Well, you blow me down with a feather. The CBC is commissioning a biography film on Jack Layton called Smiling Jack. Oh. Now, Kathy, is this worthy of a taxpayer-funded biopic? Oh, absolutely not. And uh, <laughs> when I first heard about this, I, it sounds like a cliche. I really did think that someone was pulling my leg, that it was a joke, a really elaborate, uh, amusing satire. And it turns out that they really are going to make this movie. And again, I wish that they wouldn't spend taxpayer dollars on this. Um, you know, Jack Layton, by all accounts, a nice guy. Uh, did he find a cure for cancer? No. Did he, is this Banting and Bess? No. It, it's a guy who was a city councillor and then his biggest accomplishment seems to be that he died and it was really sad. And that's kind of a, a pathetic thing to make a hero out of. You know, it's funny you say pulling uh, your leg um, <laughs> uh, on, on that note. Uh, we have a little clip. I think 
We were told this is a scene that is being considered for the Jack Lane biopic, but I don't know. Anyways, let's take a look at it. You want happy ending? Fifty dollar. Okay. Okay. Really wasn't what I was hoping for. There's the thing, Kathy. Um, when this, when Sun Media broke that story, I think mm -hmm. back in 2010, about uh, Jack Layton being uh, found as a fountain at a uh, rub and tug massage parlor, um, it was uncanny the lack of traction and I'm not saying this to you know make the guy's life misery you can buy into the idea that the state has no business in the mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, uh, the inside a, a massage parlor right. but I can't help but think if that had been Stephen Harper that was a found in at the Velvet Touch what do you think would have happened well the problem with that thought uh, experiment is that it's impossible for me to imagine that <laughs> in the first place. <laughs> you know, um, when I heard about that, we all kind of rolled our eyes. Left-wing politicians have a habit of fooling around. It's, it's their, it's their uh, modus operandi. Um, here's what gets me, though. I, I, it seems to me that the left, this, this incident with Jack Layton proves that with all the social engineering, you can take all the feminism 101 classes you want, you can do all the consciousness raising you want and wear all the white ribbons you want. At the end of the day, men are men. That when we see this biopic, is it going to be, because it is the CBC making it, right. is it going to be Jack Layton, warts and all, or is this going to be a very sanitized, glossed over, uh, vision of the leader of the Orange Crush. Oh, it, it'll probably be very sanitized. I mean, there'll be some uh, derogger little fights that he has with Olivia Chow or some kind of struggle or he loses his temper once in a while. But I think we all know that this is going to be, there'd be no point in them making it if it wasn't going to be St. Jack. And uh, I'm thinking of having viewing parties at my house if people want to come <laughs> over, get drunk, and treat it like, uh, you know, uh, reefer madness and just laugh at the thing because I think that's the only reaction that you can really have to it. Will you invite me, of Kathy? Of course, oh, absolutely. You're it's invited. a date. It's a date. Oh, We're thank you so it. much, Kathy. That's right. There you go. Whenever that film comes out, Smiling Jack, we'll be smiling. We'll actually be laughing out we'll loud. We'll be laughing. For all the fun. wrong reasons, yeah. I suspect. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Kathy Shadow, thank you so much again for joining me in the man cave here.